What's up guys, welcome back to the German Camps channel. Today we're gonna do a full review of the Beta FPV 85X. I'm pretty excited to bring you all of the detailed information about this quad. If you're looking to buy one, you can see the links down below. Also, if you enjoy my videos, the help that I provide for the FPV community, and you'd like to get into the Drone Camps Patreon, you can click on that link down below and also become my friend and join Patreon behind the scenes and uh, ask me questions about your quads. You can talk to others in our Discord chat and all that good stuff right there. And you're, you'll be in every month's drawing, which we have a drawing that's overdue for the first week of February that I'm gonna announce really soon, um, the trash can and the ready to fly Emacs Tiny Hawk. So um, keep your fingers crossed there. The winners will be out um, today or tomorrow possibly. So uh, be, be sure to subscribe to the channel. But you saw previously, my last video was sort of a sneak peek of the 85X. And I showed you guys what it looks like flying up in the mountains on a crystal clear, calm day. There was a snowstorm and it was absolutely the perfect day to fly this uh, way out and do some range testing with this. Also to test out the Cadex Turtle version two on board. A lot of you guys wanna know about that camera and how well it performs. The good thing about this review is that I've already been through all the different props that fit on these motors and I tested each one of them. I also tested this quad on two, three, and four S. So you guys can get an idea of what the Jello looks like. Um, I had some Jello issues with this quad right out of the box. And the good thing for you guys is that I went through and hashed that out and came out with the best result, which you're looking at right now. These are the Gem Fan 1940 props on here. And they're just under the two inch prop size. Uh, but these reduce the Jello to a tolerable level. I won't say it's perfect. Um, you can be the judge when you see the video. I'm gonna include in this video, I'm gonna show some line of sight and some FPV. I'm also gonna include that mountain footage that we showed earlier and uh, just that little intro to that mountain footage that some of you guys might've missed and you'll, you'll get to see it in this video. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead outside. Let's do some line of sight flying with the 85X. I think you're gonna be pleased with it. Um, the final results of this video are are awesome. You, you know, this is one of the best cinema whoops out there right now. When you call it, I call it cinema whoop. Um, you can have more fun with this if it's in the palm of your hand and you really can bring home some amazing video to edit and upload and share with your friends. So uh, I think this is probably one of the best developments out there right now in the cinema whoop market. And Beta FPV has nailed it on this one. So I think they have a real winner here. I would absolutely put my money down take my money for the 85X HD version. It's freaking insane, I love it. And uh, it's cheap to maintain. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, charge up all these batteries. We'll head out to the field, do some line of sight. I'll show you that mountain footage that we, we shot a couple days ago and uh, the result of these 1940 props in that mountain footage. Here we go. All right guys, let's go ahead and plug in the battery and get this little guy up in the air. Let me show you how it flies the line of sight. And as always, afterwards, we're going to do some FPV. We'll test out 2S battery, 3S, and a 4S battery. So here we go. This is the maiden flight in Acro. It's going to fly out and see how it does. I didn't repress record on the DVR yet on the quad, but we'll show you that during the FPV. Show you how good the video looks. Make sure there's no jello in this camera. This Cadex V2 should perform pretty well right now we're flying on 3s for the line of sight demo sounds really smooth and I have the cyclone props on there nice enough power coming back down to save myself 1105 should be a good power source for this quad and this is really crossing, like kind of this is really crossing the line between whoop and micro brushless at this point guys not really classified as a whoop. It has ducks, yes, like lots of other whoops, but this is kind of leaving the category of whoop at this point. Quite a bit larger. Big brother to the 65X. Quite a bit heavier than the 75X, but we have 1080p video on this baby. 
So the rates are all still stock. Not the tightest flip in the world, but if I cut back off the throttle, I can get quite a few flips in there. That was cool. And save it at the last minute. The LEDs on the back look good. The AX2 back there is rocking the 5.8 up to 200 milliwatt. I'm super happy about that. I love the way this one looks. Just pure aesthetics. The design is really cool. And the canopy looks way better than the original 65X canopy and the uh, 75X canopy. And the Pro 2 model. It's a more industrial, ABS looking style plastic. And it's molded. Looks really nice. So let's go ahead now and do a little FPV with the 85X. And I'll show you what this video is all about and if it's up to par. Let's check it out. Here we go. You ever just get in your car and go for a drive and really clear your mind? If you're having some issues at home or you had a fight with your spouse or you're having problems with your kids, maybe it's something to do with finances. Just something has you all anxious and uh, maybe you're going through a divorce or something like that, a lost relationship. All these things that happen to us in life like really weigh on us personally and sometimes we have to find a way to escape all of those anxieties and those depressing thoughts in life. And, and one of the ways that a lot of people I know do it is through FPV. This first person view with these little tiny mini drones that I discovered years ago and it kind of changed my life again. So many things in life have inspired me and really gotten me off of the path that I was originally on and, and on a new exciting adventure. And today I'm out to fly a new one where again changing the way things are done. Technology is at another shift. Things are getting smaller and smaller all the time. It's incredible that I can go out and create something with something so small, like this little guy. So sit back, let me show you what it can do. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Music, more 
All right, guys, welcome back from the flight test with the Hulkies on board. Now, I also did experiment with this quad on, like I said before, 2S, and I tried these other props. I'll show you a little bit of video now from uh, those other flights that I had with the original props. And 2S will show you a little bit of 3S video here. You can just check that out. And it was a little bit better on 3S, as you can see here. Um, I was using the dial prop. 2030s in this flight and it was okay it was probably the best i could get on those 2030 props that came in the box um, and then we move up to a 4s battery and 4s seemed to be pretty good but really not very useful as far as the video goes i'm going to recommend that if you guys want to freestyle fly this quad with a ton of power I think you're probably going to get the best video on 3S. You're going to get the best performance, obviously, on 4S. So guys that really want to rip this quad, fly it on 4S. It's absolutely awesome on 4S. I love it. It's just not really the battery of choice if you're going to do cine whoops type stuff and, and make those videos. So uh, power down to the 3S battery and you get the best performance out of this quad for, for that type of video and way less jello. And the power voltage range on the Cadex Turtle V2 is something like 4 to 20 volts. So you have plenty of range in there. If you plug in a 4S battery directly to it, you're not going to fry it. So it handles plenty of voltage. Now also, underneath this hard shell exterior, what's really cool is that they're running Omnibus F4 SD target firmware on here. Uh, one of my favorite firmwares is the Omnibus F4. So it's a really smooth and stable flight controller. I'm going to show you my PIDs in this video. We're going to go through Betaflight and we're going to walk you through my settings. If you want to use this video to kind of go through and set up your 85X, you can do that. So I'm going to try to give you guys all the value in this video I can. Uh, also, this is a different canopy than the original canopies that Beta FPV gave with their quads. Check out the difference here. This is a molded ABS style canopy, very, very thick and durable. You can see mine took some hits right there. I even have some scratches around the outside of my lens and I have some scratches here as well that might need to be replaced, but this is about a $10 camera lens, I believe, and you can get replacements for these. Now, <laughs> this is crazy. These always break. They're terrible. A lot of people are printing off of thingiverse.com the TPU version of this and just getting rid of these all together. Um, they are probably the cheapest canopies that I think I've ever seen, even cheaper than some of the Ishin stuff. Really, really not a good canopy. So they've upgraded that, and this is pretty much bomb proof. This is a really, really nice upgrade to an FPB Cinewoop canopy. And speaking of durability, guys, man, these frames are known around the world for being some of the best Whoop frames out there. This is the black version. And like I said, they have six struts, two on each side, all the way around, four bolt holes in the bottom for the motor mount. They have a few different struts on the connection parts, actually three in total right here between each prop guard. And the way you tell it's the front is these two little notches right here on the very front right here. That's the front of the quad. So if you're building one of these from scratch and you're going to put crossfire on here and go super far and all that stuff, uh, add all the bells and whistles, grab one of these frames. Even if you're using other components, people are buying the, the, the beta FPV frames because they are, I, I believe they're polycarbonate. They have a little bit of give, but they're also really rigid. And I have not broken one of these yet. Uh, as you can see from some of my other flights, like on my Mobula, not the HD version, but the original Mobula, I ended up having to scrap the frame and do a 3D printed frame um, to, to get this one back up in the air. But that was um, not the most durable frame. It was in pieces. The trash can frame did break right in the front eventually for me. So this one's not the most durable either. Um, so yeah, once that breaks, you're going to get a lot of vibration in your video and you're going to have issues. But this one does not have HD yet, but I think this one uh, is going to be HD very soon. They, I think they have something in the works 
for an HD trash can, of course, to compete with the Mobula. The other format you guys can look at for uh, recording HD video is something like the Baby Turtle as well, but this is a three inch beast, and this is completely different from something like the 85X. This does get pretty decent video, and I've shown this one on my channel before. I did a full review of this one. This one's kind of like an IH3 um, competitor, about half the price, uh, much cheaper than the IH3. So uh, an alternative for you guys with the Runcam Split V2 on there. But I think that the Cadex Turtle V2 might actually be a little bit better of a video system on here. So um, I'm going to run with this one for now. If you're going to put some money down on something new, I would absolutely recommend buying the 85X because I had an absolute ball with this one. Now let's talk about the video quality on board. I like the V2 from Cadex and this EOS 2 combination with this camera, this much larger lens to let more light in. I think this is a great combo. Now to get the best video on here, I did experiment with the 2S, the 3S, and 4S batteries. Um, I, I wasn't able to run something as large as an 850. The strap doesn't accommodate an 850 4S. It's just too fat. You're going to have to get a bigger strap. So the sweet spot, I believe, is the 3S 450. Um, I, I think that's going to give you three to four minutes flight time, probably four minutes if you're just cruising and trying to do some cinematic, uh, say, mid stick mid throttle stick type of flying now for guys that are just getting started like i always say start out on 2s you can actually fly it indoors on 2s um, you can put it in stability mode and just cruise around your house it's actually a lot of fun to do that and honestly where i found that i got the best video this was the big experimentation to run all the different props the props that were included with the quad inside the box that i got were the Dow prop cyclones, they're the 2030 props. And I thought these props were going to be great because they have a really kind of narrow cord in the center and the nice tapered edge on the outside edge. So I was expecting that this would be a nice smooth prop for HD video. No jello, no issues with horizontal line vibration or anything like that. But I did have it. Um, even on all the batteries that I tested, I did have much more jello. And the winner of all of these props ended up being the Jim Fan Hulky 1940 size props. And those are tri props that you can see. There's only three blades on those props. They are a little bit thick cord in the center, which I, you know, you would think that this would just be much more vibration, but this ended up being my prop of choice and giving me less jello and the best video. So uh, if you buy the 85X, go ahead and buy yourself a handful of these. They just run much smoother than the other props and way smoother than the Emacs Vaughn props. You guys can get a little bit of a close up here of that 1105 6000 KV motor. That's a pretty nice looking motor and they're a little bit notchy for the magnets. So they did use really high quality magnets in these motors. Now also inside the 85X box, you get this little card right here. And this little card has two QR codes on the back for the user manual and help support, support.betafpv.com. Also their Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash betafpv. They also have a support email. So if you have any questions, you guys can email them and bother them with your questions. Support at betafpv.com. I'm sure they would be happy to help. Also in the box, you get the Cadex camera control cable. There's a green cable in this box, and there's also this little joystick guy right here. And I'll try to bring it a little bit closer. You're just gonna push down on that for a selection, and you can move it up and down, just like you did in the 80s on your Atari. Left, right, up, down, pretty simple. That just plugs into the side of the camera. And they did not give me any type of batteries along with the Beta FPV quads. Ever, never, ever have they given me any batteries in their boxes. And I think that might be something to look forward to in the future. Maybe they could start including a little case along with it. It would be kind of cool if they did that with maybe a couple batteries. They give us like a, a fly more type of combo because some people want to have everything all included in one box uh, along with the receiver. So all you have to do is just bind it up, charge up the batteries and go fly. And as far as receiver options go on their website, it looks like it starts around $159 for the FR Sky FCC version with the XM Plus. And that's what I have on this one tucked underneath here. Also on the website, they have the FR Sky LBT version. They have 
Spectrum DSMX receivers. They have Flysky, Futaba. They also have PNP, which is plug and play. It means that it comes with no receiver. You can add your own on there. And they also have the awesome version, the TBS Crossfire version. So if you want to go super far, uh, yeah, get the TBS Crossfire version as long as you have a Crossfire module for your radio and you have a module bay in the back of your radio. You can go super far out there and you can go pretty far out on this 200 milliwatt transmitter. And one other thing I wanted to show you real quick before we hop into Betaflight and let me show you all my settings is the plug and play motors under here. You've got four receiver tabs on the 4-in-1 ESC on the very bottom to plug in your motor. So if you ever have a motor go bad, you just unplug it, plug in a new one, no soldering required. So let me go ahead and turn on the scale for you guys and I'll go ahead and get you a dry weight that's without a battery. Let's put the quad on there with the receiver, the props, everything, and see what we get. 75.5 grams. And we'll start out with the 2S450 because the 450 is gonna be the weight that I would recommend. I'll just move that so you guys can see it. It's 104.9, 105 grams with the 2S450. And that 3S is weighing in at 116.7 grams. So way under the 250 gram uh, regulated limit. So that is really awesome for so much technology that's packed into the 85X. I just absolutely love it. So I think what we have here from Beta FPB is probably one of the best quads that they have released to date so far. The 85X with HD CADX Turtle V2 is absolutely my favorite with the 1105 motors. A little more weight on this quad than the other 75 2S whoops. Well, why would you want a little more weight? Why would I prefer this over this one? Uh, mainly because if I do go outside, this one's great for, you know, if you're going to use it for mostly for indoor. But if you're going to take it outside, the little bit of extra weight actually helps you a lot with the video. And I was explaining this to a friend yesterday because uh, the more wind that you have outside, you're not going to be able to fly this in very much wind and, and get away with um, making some decent videos. It's going to have a lot of that washout. You're going to have a lot of forces, outside forces pushing on the quad, on the prop guards, and in those really tight turns, you're going to have washouts. Some people have worked it out, and there's some pretty good tunes out there, but this one has way less washout than the previous versions, like the 65X and the 75X. So uh, I was able to get this one to wash out, and the only way that I could do that was um, actually do like a 150-foot corkscrew at the ground and then pull out at the very bottom and I could finally get this flight controller to freak out and that was the only way that I could get it to freak out for you guys I tried everything um, and it did perform pretty well with not a lot of washout but I, you know as you can tell I, I do like this quad and I, I think beta FPV has something here I think that the extra price for this one is worth it for the CADX Turtle V2 because hey that's about a $70 camera and DVR combo there for your 1080p 60 frame a second video. I think it's a really nice setup there for um, making decent Cinewhoop videos. And my rating for this one is going to be a 4.9 out of 5 stars. Um, very high rated. It's not perfect and I can't rate it five stars because it's not absolutely perfect and as time goes on we might get a better PID tune on this and if I do get it I will share it with you guys. But for now Let's go ahead and hop into beta flight, you guys. And uh, I want to say if you're cutting the video off now, thanks again for watching this video. And please do subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell down at the bottom right. That would be super awesome. I'll bring you more awesome videos coming up. Uh, so enjoy the beta flight section of the video, guys. And thanks for watching the full review of the 85X. Okay, guys, let me go ahead and walk you through the beta flight setup. I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the quad here. Make sure you have your drivers installed as always. And we should come into the main menu here. When you're in the setup tab right here, go ahead and click reset Z axis and make sure the quad is facing you. This will let you check the orientation of the board left and right. Should be right, left, and forward and back just like that. It's a little bit delayed. And if you want to, you can recalibrate your accelerometer up here at the very top, as long as you have the quad sitting ultimately flat on your table. Uh, for the port setup, we have three UARTs there. We have it set up on UART 1 for the XM Plus, and you have your Smart Audio down here on UART 6. TBS Smart Audio has to be active there on the Peripherals tab because uh, if it's not, 
you will not get smart audio set up to your sticks. And that will just let you change your bands, channel, and power on your VTX, which is kind of cool. We also have a props out configuration. So that means that number one motor is actually spinning uh, out to the left. And right now it looks like we have number one spinning to the left, number four spinning to the left, two to the right, and three to the right there. And it looks like they have 1200 set up here, D-Shot 1200 for the ESC motor features for the ESC motor protocol and 6.5 on the motor idle value, which is actually pretty high. Normally I see about a 4.5 there, but 6.5 will allow uh, a little bit higher idle speed and it won't let your ESC kick over and probably give you the flip of death. We have 8K right there on the PID loop frequency and the gyro update frequency right there. That's totally fine. 180 maximum arm angle. That means that if you decide to put turtle mode on here, the crash recovery system will flip the quad back over and it will rearm the quad at any angle, which is great because if you crash in a tree and you've got that set to 180, then you're going to be able to rearm the quad and hopefully kind of maybe motor your way out of a tree. And I've done that before. Receiver is set up to serial based receiver spec sat S bus for the receiver mode S bus on the serial re receiver provider. Go ahead and put those two there if you have an XM Plus. And by the way, you're going to bind up your XM Plus on a D16 inside your radio. Other features here, we only have about four things selected. We have anti-gravity, dynamic filter, OSD, the LED strip active, of course, no GPS or 3D. And on the power and battery settings, I change this every single time because I don't want the warning to pop up on the screen. I don't want the quad to start kind of beeping midair when I do a throttle bump. So turn down your minimum cell voltage right here to 2.9. You can leave that next one down at 4.3 and the very bottom one, you can turn it down to three. Uh, be, be a little bit careful with that. Don't run your batteries down too much um, because you can damage the cells in your battery. And you wanna go ahead and click save down here in the bottom right. When you're done with making those changes now the next tab will be fail safe and everything in the fail safe is pretty standard procedure in here uh, we have stage two set for the guard time and we have the quad set to drop we never make it land because i've had some flyaway issues with uh, other guys setting the throttle value too high and they ended up getting locked into one high throttle value and uh, just you keep going up and up and up and your quad flies away. So uh, you wanna set it to drop as always. Now here are the PIDs and I'll go ahead and zoom in on these PIDs. If you guys want to copy these PIDs, go ahead and pause the video now, copy all these numbers into your 85X and you should have the same type of video that I had as long as you're running those 1940 props. With this PID tune, you should get pretty decent video. Uh, all my rates, also my flip and roll rates are set a little bit, a um, little bit low at 0 0.70 for the roll, pitch, and yaw axis there. That's totally fine. Now I'm going to zoom back out. And I want to show you the PID controller settings down here as well. They have the acro trainer limit, angle limit set to 20, throttle boost is set to 5. We have I-term rotation turned on. VBAT PID compensation is also turned on and the I-term relax is also turned on. Now you can see your rates preview right there. If you want to uh, turn on your quad, plug in a battery right now, you'll be able to see how fast your quad flips and rolls with the super rates that we have here. If you want to increase the flip rate, increase this number right here. If you want to make it slower and smoother, it's gonna be a bigger loop when you do a roll or a loop you can lower that down to about 0 0.60 for the beginners if you really want to uh, just tame it down a little bit. So now we're on the next tab down and go ahead and plug in your battery. If you're gonna plug in a 3S, 2S, 4S, it doesn't matter. Uh, right now we're just gonna check that all of your channel maps right here are correct with the sticks on your radio. I have mine set up to AETR1234. RSSI is on AUX4. Now you want to go ahead and start out with your left stick. We're going to check the yaw axis left right there. You should see that this blue bar moves left. When you go left stick, push your stick to the right and it should go out like that all the way up to about 2000, just below 1000 there and back to around 1500 at a resting center stick. Now we're going to go up with the throttle and you should see it raise up like that and go to the right when I move the stick up and back down. And we're going to go to the right stick now. The right stick, we're going to check out the roll 
first, go left like this, right like that. That should show you left and right. If it doesn't, you have to go into your radio and switch things around um, inside your mixer menu. Now we're gonna go pitch forward and down. And the way you do that is you're gonna press model and then you're gonna press page up or page down to get all the way over to your inputs and your mixer if you need to change that stuff. So um, you want it to match up with what you have here on the screen. Now, as far as my arm switch, I always put aux one. That is the stick that's all the way right here on the outside edge closest to my index finger. My mode switch is going to be two and I have it kind of paired up with another switch there, but that doesn't matter because that switch is not active. Uh, so I've got two active there and I only use one mode. So that's going to be acro for me. So I don't even really need that mode uh, switch. I just set it up to show you guys and for the beeper, I have the beeper set up on aux three right there at the very bottom. Now this is where it gets tricky setting up your modes. We go down to the next tab here. This is where guys get confused. Um, this is very simple to do. After you've done it a few times, you will get the hang of it. Now, say I had nothing here. Let's just start out with a blank screen right there. And to get your quad to arm, you need to add a range right there. Once you do that, see it kind of automatically selected aux 12 there, but we're gonna go back. Remember we're on aux one for my switch. And you see this little yellow dot went back to there because my switch is all the way to the outside position and that's that position there on this line. Now go ahead and grab your mouse and grab this in the center and drag it all the way out to the edge to the right. Sort of uh, bring this white tab over a little bit, make it a little cleaner. And then we'll hit save down at the bottom. Once you've done that, move your switch. If you see it move over inside this yellow bar right here, you're good. And you can even scoot that in just a little more right about like that. Hit save again. If you want to add stability to your quad, you're going to hit add range for angle. And remember, our modes are different than our arm switch. So our mode switch, if you go back and look, that was aux two, right? So that's the way you check on that. You go back to the receiver tab, move your switch, and you can see that it's on aux two. So here we're going to add range for angle, and that is stability mode. We're going to scroll up to aux two, and that if you want it on the first position, the switch all the way facing away from you, move that slider over right there, kind of line it up so that the dot is sort of in the middle of these two white tabs, hit save. And now you can see that when that switch is all the way up like that, that that lights up. So now I go to the next position and this is where you can add horizon if you want to. So add a range there. You're going to change the aux tab to aux two. So they're on the same switch. That would be the next position in the middle of the switch. So now I can check that, press save. Now I can go back to angle, horizon, and then all the way out at the very bottom switch on that same switch. Notice it's kind of floating here. It also shows that uh, it's in the arm position. That is where acro mode is. Acro doesn't exist anywhere on this menu. So if you're looking for acro and you can't find it, that's because when you're free floating out here, this is acro. Very strange that Betaflight does it this way and it would be nice if they actually had a range to add for acro. So you could put acro anywhere you want, but the way to do it is just have it free floating. So if you want acro, say you want to delete horizon, then anywhere between here, here and here is where acro would be. Okay. Um, that's something that you're going to have to get used to. So if you want to add your horizon range back where it was before aux two right in the center there, scooch these in a little bit so that they're kind of even press save. You don't want these white tabs overlapping by the way, because things get wonky. The next one down is the beeper and that's on aux three, very simply testing out aux three there, make sure that's selected on that tab. So I'm pretty much good to go. This one we could add on aux four. I could set up another switch if I want flip over after crash, but you know what? I don't really use flip over after crash on uh, 1105 type motors. So I can uncheck that right there. I'm not going to use that. Now we're going to save. So that's not on there. And we're pretty much ready to go to the OSD now. And this is where it gets really fun. There are all these settings here that you can go in and change. You can turn things on and off. I usually just have my battery level 
the name of the quad 85x and the fly minutes on here and the fly minute is timer two so uncheck timer one if you want timer one on you can have both of those on and i just activated it so i'm going to grab it and drag it over just above that one and the on time is the first timer timer one which means how long the battery's been plugged in the fly minutes are from the time you spool up the motors so that's going to give you your actual flight time that's why i use timer two instead of timer one so i'm going to remove that save that and i have my rssi up at the very top and you can turn that on and off as well you can turn on your vtx channel just by turning on that move it to where you want it top or bottom wherever you like it hit save and always double check your OSD and everything before you go out and fly uh, for the first time because it might be different in your goggles. You might have this whole bottom part cut off depending on what video format selected up here. If it's on auto and your goggles don't coincide with Betaflight, it might throw things off here and cut off this entire bottom piece. Um, so double check that, plug in your quad and check that out before you go outside. And everything else is up to you to add. So you can add crosshairs, artificial horizon, and all that jazz, but I leave all that off because it's distracting to me to have something in the very center of the frame. Now, the next thing you can do is go down to CLI, and I always recommend that you guys do this. If you've gone through this entire video and you set up everything, go ahead and type D-U-M-P in that bottom line right there and hit return. It's gonna give you all the data that's on the flight controller. Go ahead and go to the very bottom. You can also save to file down here at the bottom right. And that way you can have a backup file of this entire dump right here. Um, that is very important. You can also do it manually by grabbing at the very bottom and just scrolling up to the top right underneath where it says Betaflight OSD right under version, right up to about version. And then you can copy it on your keyboard and paste it into a text file. That way, if you have to reflash your flight controller, even with a newer, latest version of Betaflight, so you wanted to upgrade it, it's on 3.5 right now, but you could uh, upgrade that. And then you can just paste this back in and hit return. And you'll have all your old settings in there, all your OSD and everything else. But that's about it for the Betaflight setup on the 85X, guys. Hopefully that little Betaflight uh, quick overview helped you guys out to get your 85X going. And... Uh, the PIDs on there as well. But thanks again for watching my videos, guys. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Please do subscribe. I'm Justin Davis. Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next one.